It's time now for Better Health. We're joined today by Beth Coker and Dr. Henderson with Asante. Thank you so much. Now, we know sleep is so important for health, and today we're tackling sleep disorders. Grace, about 70 million people suffer from common sleep disorders in the United States. Dr. Henderson, what are some of these common disorders of sleep and their causes? Some of the most common disorders we see are sleep apnea, um, insomnia, restless legs. We also see things that aren't as common, things like nightmare disorders, movement disorders in your sleep. Um, there's a multitude of causes when it comes to things like sleep apnea. Genetics play a large role. There's actually multiple types of sleep apnea. So things like central sleep apnea, where the brain's not getting the signal to the body to breathe at the right time, it's caused by things like heart disease or being on opiate therapy, where obstructive sleep apnea is caused by blocking of the airway. It's caused by things like genetics and age and weight gain. Things like insomnia, we see when people are stressed during a pandemic. <laughs> But we also see it in association with other medical conditions, with changes in hormones at different stages of life. Um, and then things like restless legs, we see just, again, genetic. Everything's genetic. So people who are suffering from a sleep disorder, what would be some of the symptoms that they're experiencing? So um, the most common symptoms that people show up with are feeling tired during the day and difficulty sleeping at night. Um, what they get told about is their snoring or their abnormal breathing patterns at night or they're moving all over the bed. Uh, women often get told that they make p -p noises or sounds in their sleep rather than classic snoring. So once a patient comes in with a sleep disorder and they're diagnosed, how do you treat them? So we do a really comprehensive interview during the first visit because we cover so many different sleep disorders and not all of them require a sleep study. So you get asked about a million and three questions about your sleep habits, your sleep symptoms, your daytime symptoms, and your other health problems, because a lot of them are related. From there, the provider who sees you, whether it's one of our first physicians or nurse practitioners, decides if you need an actual sleep study, whether or not it needs to be an in-lab or an in-home sleep study, or whether we can just start on treatment, or maybe you need some lab work done. Great. So anybody out there suffering from these symptoms, there is help at the Sleep Lab. Thank you so much for your time. All right. Thank you so much for your insight. Such important information there. We'll be right back.